So the first question that I'm ha that I'm seeing here uh, has more to do with with Erica's presentation and the amount of manure that horses produce. Uh, the person is asking how much area that they might need per horse. Yeah, so we typically talk about at least starting with two acres. Um, and then after that, I think we say at least half an acre for each horse after that. However, it definitely doesn't hurt to have more than that per horse because horses, it, manure aside, tend to be not very friendly to grass. They tend to really graze down certain areas compared to others. I mean, to the sand, to the ground, whatever soil you have. So if you have more acreage, it's definitely definitely better from a nutrient standpoint um, and potentially from a health standpoint. However, kind of depends on the situation that you're into and where you're located. We know plenty of other horse owners that don't necessarily have a ton of acreage, but they do a really good job managing the acreage that they have and supplying enough hay for their horses and keeping appropriate environmental practices in place for those areas that they know are gonna be a little more risky since they don't necessarily have the pasture. Somebody suggested listeners might want to take advantage of Toastmasters. I don't have any familiarity with that program, so do either of you? I haven't done it personally, though I've heard good things. Um, it's really about presentation skills. Um, Toastmaster is, and especially public speaking. So I think it can be great for folks who may struggle with that. Um, and I think I, I've heard most about Toastmasters is that it's really good for overcoming anxiety around public speaking. Um, and then once you really kind of have a great model for it, then it can really make sure that those public speaking is engaging, which is, I think, uh, really pertinent with what Leslie and Erica were talking about. All right, um, so the next question is, any suggestion for getting busy farmers to attend events? So I think Anne's whole presentation was kind of on just exactly that, really getting them hooked. Any other additional suggestions? Is there a timing of the programs that maybe is, is better? Yeah, I think timing uh, comes into play. I'm not sure as much about timing during the day, but more seasonally timing. Uh, in Wisconsin, we have a lot of dairy producers, so timing during the day is sometimes pertinent about when their, you know, dairymen come around or when they need to be doing milking, et cetera. But obviously that would differ based on, you know, farm management style. I do think we've had success getting farmers to events, writing feature press releases, and then giving it to local ag newspapers as well as ag reporters, right? For Wisconsin, we have a ag, um, ag farm report that one, uh, one, <coughs> newscaster does for a bunch of different radio and newspapers and so that's been really helpful is you know engaging her and and making sure she knows who we are and that she, she can do interviews with us and with our clientele um, I also think with um, farmers it's you know, so many things is based on what other farmers are doing right so one key thing is to get an invite from another farmer that's always gonna be key is having like the invite come from the farmer themselves. If it is something where you have their contact information. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, one of the other things that sometimes helps is having farmers that know somebody that's at the program or that's going to be speaking at the program. If they have a personal relationship and they really want to come hear that person speak again and just developing with our programs anyway, most of them have to have some kind of communication with me previous to that too um, so they know who I am already when I'm sending out information about these programs they know who I'm who I am and what I'm doing and so um, for us they're also required to attend um, it's a you know it's a certification that they have to obtain every five years and so that's part of how we get good attendance we have about a hundred every month or every year that do have to attend so um, yeah, Dale also says get someone to provide food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would totally agree with that. Difference. <laughs> and if there is a programming and you're providing lunch, say free lunch, mm -hmm. that's something that we often see is that like we'll be like lunch is provided, but it's at the bottom. Put it up front more. Um, I think too, when you're doing more direct outreach, 
um, what problem are you solving to them? And then, hey, we have this event, we're expecting fellow farmers from throughout this county, we're providing lunch, it's free, you know. So again, making, getting some of those barriers that they may be perceiving out of the way. But food is always a motivator.